All right, you must be getting excited. You want to get these things moving around now. That's exactly what we're going to do here. Okay, let's start with player one. You have player one here. If you actually double click, it pops open. Object properties player one. Now let's maximize this just so we can get a good view. This is the object window. This is the most popular window that you're going to work with. What it shows here is it has a list of events and it has a list of actions. This is where we'll put our code. Now, the way that GameMaker works is these objects sit there and one thing they can do is react to an event. Now, if we click the event button, we'll see what events are like. You'll see somebody could press a key. Somebody could click a mouse. Somebody could release a key. Somebody could hold a key on the keyboard down. Somebody could collide with something. And there's a few others here. These actually split into larger menus as well. Now, what happens here is we want to make player one move, obviously, when keys are used. For player one, I'm going to use A, S, D, and W on the keyboard. So they're the left side of the keyboard. Now, if you want to use different letters, go use your favorite letters. But I'm going to do A, S, D, W. And here's how it goes. I'm going to use keyboard, letter, D, and D's to move right. So the event I just added now, this object can react to when the D key is held down. And when the D key is held down, I want something to happen. Now you'll see GameMaker has a lot of drag and drop buttons here that you can drag and drop, duh, into the actions window. We're not going to do that. We want to go straight to coding because that's what you're here to learn. So we go to the control tab. And on the control tab, there's this piece of paper, code. Don't confuse it with this one here. That's a little different. All you do, click, drag, release, and you get a code window. Now my code window here is a little big. I'll just shrink it down. And what you can do, you can actually hit F8 if you want to make the font a little bigger, is we can type a little code. Now at first, these code lines are going to be a little mysterious because it's the first time you're seeing them. What we're going to do is you'll slowly pick them up. So we'll just start using one. One thing that GameMaker keeps track of for every single object is the speed of the object. And you can change the speed of the object just by doing a line like this. Speed equals 4. Now how fast is 4? You're going to see how fast 4 is, but it's something like 4 pixels per loop of the game. It'll make sense later on. 4 is a decent speed for now. Now you can't just tell it to move at a speed of 4. Of course you want to tell it what direction to go. Another built-in thing that GameMaker keeps track of is direction. GameMaker's directions 0 is right, 90 is up, 180 is left, 270 is down, and you can do 0 or 360 is back to going right again. It basically makes a circle and so you can pick any angle you want. Okay, but the circle starts facing right at zero and then goes counterclockwise around in a loop like this. So you just name your angle. These slashes, by the way, are comments. They won't count as code when the program runs. So you can just leave them there, no harm done. I've hit the D key, that's to the right. So I want to set the direction of the object to the right. Now you can probably see that you're going to repeat this process for the three other keys, which is exactly what I'm going to do using these directions right here. Add event. Keyboard keys held down. Letter A. Now this is left. I'll set the speed to 4 and the direction to 180, which was left. I'll add another event, keyboard, letter, W, 
drag a little code. Speed is 4. Direction was up, which was 90. Now, if you spell something wrong, you'll notice the word changes color. This will not work. Okay, programs are very finicky. It's following your instructions, and the instruction has to be the right instruction. So, if you're trying to change the value of something like this, it has to be spelt right. Okay, it's a very common beginner mistake, is you just don't realize that you have a little thing like the T and the C backwards. You may not catch it. You wonder why your program's not working. Always go back and check the spelling. Okay, it's the first thing you want to check. And I have one more direction here. The S for down. Keyboard, letters, S. Drag a little code. Speed is 4. Direction down. 270 degrees. Now that's really it. You have those four. You can always go back, double click to revisit the code in case you need to make a change or add something in. Let's see what this does. Hit the play. All right, the moment of truth. ASDW. A S D W. Now you're going to notice something. Not just that it works beautifully, but when I let go of the keys, the player keeps going. Okay, we'll fix that in a second with a quick little fix. And you'll also notice that I just go through the walls. Game Maker helps you out a little bit by drawing the graphics and doing some of the events for you. But what it doesn't do is it doesn't code any of your objects for you. You have to put all that code in yourself. So you are having to code in everything you want to have happen. Okay, next video. Actually, not next video. Let's just do it in this video. Let's fix that uh, constant movement. I'm going to give you one more event as a little bonus in this video. Let's add an event to the player called the create event. The create event is a bit of a special event. When this room loads up, Everything is sort of born and made and placed into the room. So player one gets made, it's created. Boom. Placed in the room. The second it's placed in the room, that's when the create event runs. Now if you're thinking that only happens once, pretty well that only happens once, right when the player is created. So whatever code you put in here, in the create event, there's a little code. This is only going to run when the player's made. So it's sort of a one-time go. And here's your little bonus code. There's a special variable thing you can set called friction. Set it small. And what friction does is what friction in the real world does is it slows things down a bit. This will make a nice little change to the player movement for you. So as long as you spell it right, check it off. Player's created frictions turned on. And now when we play, you'll notice it has a bit better of a look to it. There's a little bit of a slowdown, a drag. Now you can still go through the walls. That's the next lesson. Okay, we'll do the collisions. Before we get to the next lesson, consider you're going to want to get player two moving. Thanks for watching.